Welcome to PC Wits Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Asus Store AS6302T 2-Bay NAS. Now I also have paired up with it the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS hard drives. I've got two of these which we're going to look at also. This is an all-in-one NAS. What are you going to use it for? Well, it's really up to you. Possibilities are, you know, very flexible here. And uh, I like how this has a great operating system. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Three years warranty on this puppy. It's got the latest Apollo Lake Intel processor. That's the Celeron 6th generation processor with 2 gigahertz on that one, up to 2.5. 2 gigs of DDR3 memory, upgradable to 8. Cross-platform, obviously, you can see there, Windows, Mac, Unix, Linux. Obviously, you want to have cross-platform for sharing all your files and uh, support for... Um, different types of use cases, right? You might want to use this uh, for surveillance, maybe. You want to just uh, capture video and uh, have all that stored on there for backups. Maybe you want to use this as a streaming server, a backup for all your movies and, and, and videos and things like that. In the box, you're going to get the necessities. Obviously, the power adapter, 65 watts there on that cable, the, the adapter there. Two Ethernet uh, cables, terrific that they uh, added that because there are two Ethernet ports. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Drivers, you've got the software there, some screws, and uh, a little hook there so you can hook up the uh, power adapter so it doesn't get unplugged accidentally. And here is a close look again at the front of the um, NAS drive. You can see the two bays there that uh, have latches that are easily, you know, detached so you can slide out the uh, cages and install your drive. Now, depends on what you want to do. Like I said, you might uh, want to upgrade this up to 20 uh, terabytes in size. I'm just putting in two uh, six terabyte drives in there and of course depending on how you um, set this up in the RAID configuration it's going to use up more or less hard drive so the flexibility again is there for you to choose when you go to initialize and set up your drives here's a closer look at these cages of course metal on the frame with plastic uh, covering it and uh, isolating it so that there's no issues and here's a nice little peek on the inside as well so you can see uh, how nice it looks on, on uh, the inside, so you can slide the drives very clean. Uh, you can see a heat sink there. You can see the 70 millimeter uh, fan in the back as well, and the SATA connectors uh, at the rear. Okay, so uh, it makes a good solid connection when you slide it in, latch it closed. Here's the back of the NAS drive where you can see the um, new USB. You know, there's the Type A and the Type C. Well, they give you both uh, USB 3.0, HDMI 2.0 there, 4K support, your SPDIF. And the 70 millimeter fan that I just told you about a second ago as well. Now, here are the Iron Wolf NAS drives from Seagate. Two six terabyte drives, terrific. You can expand it up to 10 terabytes if you wanted. And uh, I attached the screws onto the cage as you can see right there. And uh, once you just uh, screw the, the four screws on either side, uh, two and two, you can just slide it in to the NAS drive. Now, of course, face it in the appropriate direction. You know, when you slide it in, you don't want to wreck it on the first try. So just uh, be very gentle uh, to make sure that you face the um, cage in the right direction. It's not uh, rocket science. All you have to do is just hold it up as such. You see the little button there, it releases that latch and then you can slide it right in and then click it into place. Now, once you plug this in, you're gonna see LEDs, lights blinking here and there, don't worry. Okay, you still have to initialize and set up the drives before anything can happen. Okay, so yes, you do have the power LED, hard drive LEDs, indicators on the bays, uh, green and red, for example, different colors when things are going wrong. You've got your network, um, blink, blinking lights, all kinds of stuff, right? And the USB one touch uh, backup is really handy. Now, when you go to set it up, right? So you've got the CD, you, you, you install uh, the uh, quick installation guide there and you select your model that you have. And of course, this is the uh, AS6302T. And you go through the motions of starting the installation of the control center. In that control center, of course, it will step you through. So don't worry, It'll, it, it's very intuitive, easy to follow and uh, it does most of the work for you. You will have to um, allow access obviously to the NAS drive and uh, once it sets it up, you will need to initialize it. So uh, once it's set it up, you need to initialize the NAS drive and basically tell it what you want to use it for, right? So not just formatting and partitioning uh, the drive, but also um, 
how do you want to set it up for your RAID, RAID 0, RAID 1, the defaults. So I'm going to just use the defaults here. I'm going to use the uh, one-click setup on it, which is the recommended uh, initial setup, just to see how things go. So obviously you can do a custom, but I'm going to use the uh, one-click so you can see how easy it is. Enter the server name, uh, put in whatever name you want there at the top, and it tells you the capacity and everything of your drives that it's detected, and it starts going, like I said, through the motions of going and installing things for you. Now, um, at one point during this installation, it's going to ask you, what do you want to use this for? Is it for home? Is it uh, for business? Uh, depending on what you use it for, it's going to install some things and support by default, right? And it's going to give you the options to select what apps you want to uh, enable also right, at, right off the bat. So here we are, um, the uh, OS, basically is, is like a tablet. You can see that it's got a very, you know, uh, easy interface, just apps that you just click on and each app will have different options for you to use. It's pretty self-explanatory. You got an app for backing things up. You got another app, which is the app center, basically to download more apps. There's a, there's a, a settings app, which I'll open up right here to show you all the different settings that you can manage and change. So obviously if you have other, um, uh, requirements on who you want to access and you want to pass or protect it and you want to change the name and you want to restrict the ports or things like that, then you can go in here and actually enable or disable um, specific aspects of the, uh, the NAS, right? So settings, very useful. Obviously, I recommend you go in here after uh, you've initialized the drive to set things to your liking. Uh, some of you might not want any LEDs blinking. Right? Maybe you want it to just run dark in the corner of your house, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, maybe you want it to uh, be on power saving mode, right? So you have to go in and, and select those power saving mode options uh, if you want to enable that. So again, this is for you to go through slowly. Um, there's tons, tons of options in here. Obviously, you don't have to tweak every single thing. You can leave it on auto, such as the fan control. Just leave it. Uh, it's actually very quiet. And... Um, whether you want to allow deny connections, you know, the ADM Defender, Certificate Manager, we'll skip over that. Uh, ADM Update, I always want to have it automatically update the OS on the NAS, so that's great. Uh, we're at version 3.x. Uh, and um, if you want to set this up for the cloud so you can back things up to the cloud, why not? You can do that as well. It's up to you. Okay, so flexibility is there, and if something ever goes wrong, uh, you could always do a factory default uh, reset of everything. And there's the option here at the bottom. Okay, so those those are the settings. Now there is also the services app. So I opened up the services app here just to show you. Obviously, you'd want to connect maybe um, remotely to the NAS. You want to have an FTP server on it. So uh, maybe you're downloading stuff, uh, uploading stuff, serving things uh, throughout and uh, you want to enable um, the capability. So here's your services to enable access to that, including Active Directory for Windows, which is great. Um, here in the App Central, which is like the App Store, uh, you would go ahead and um, see the default Asus Store apps, which I'm going through right now. And then there's all kinds of third-party apps, right? And prerequisites, things that you might see on a Kodi box, on an Android box. You might see these on many different types of uh, multimedia uh, servers. Well, you can get that and make your NAS drive the server um, and um, have Kodi running on it. Why not, right? And then uh, plug uh, through the HDMI cable at the back of your NAS drive to your, to your TV and then just have, um, have access to Kodi that way, right, uh, from your NAS instead of buying a... Uh, an Android box, for example, right? Now, from the NAS hard drive monitoring aspect, uh, like I said earlier, I've got the Seagate uh, Iron Wolf 6 terabyte drives in here. It's great that you're able to go into the Storage Manager app that it has. That utility is terrific for checking the health, for configuring the drive, checking to make sure that uh, it's healthy, basically, temperature-wise. Uh, it's not overheating, uh, and you can get system information, right? When I ran some benchmarks, you can see here the transfer tests. You can pause the screen to see these more in detail. 
as you can see it varies depending on how big the file is that you're transferring or streaming you're going to get more or less what i really liked about it of course is the 4k output very complete easy to use user interface tons of third-party apps dual gigabit ethernet is terrific as well and of course having the backup options that are flexible one touch backup is really uh, a great so you can back things up to usb or from the usb you can back it up onto your nas for example so all kinds of options very flexible um, well constructed nas drive from asus store i can't say much bad about it to be honest other than maybe uh you know for those of you that are looking for something um not too pricey well this might be a little bit on the higher end side but then again it is a mid to higher end nas compared to others so keep that in mind so i'd like to thank isis store for providing it comment below let me know what you think i'll add the latest pricing for this nas drive below in the description and again thank you for watching